So one thing I want to show you is how to create these things called data indexes. So I renamed it to data, and I'm making a new one called data index. I also refer to these as keys. So the thing I need to know is what are all the groups that I'm going to focus on for customer type. The first thing I want to do is go all the way down here. Um, and what I'll do is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10. I might not use all 10 rows there, but just have them there. So first and foremost, we'll have student, we'll have staff, and we will have professor. Let's do instructor, which we're going <clears> to <throat> discuss as different than professor. They're not the same. Um, let's have... Um, I don't know what, what other groups could we have. We could have industry guest, prospective student. So then you're going to want to say current student. Okay. And what else could we have here? Well, do we want to specify what type of staff? I'm going to break it out further. Uh, how about alumni? That would be a good one. <clears throat> and do we want, I mean, staff could be coaches. So do we really need another category? Do we need any more categories? I think this is pretty good. So we don't need eight, nine, and 10. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to show you what we do here. Um, we have customer type. So I'm going to create this formula, and then I'm going to show you how it works. It's a VLOOKUP. But the lookup value is going to be a rand between 1 and 7. And we're going to go over here and use this. So obviously, if you don't know a VLOOKUP, go look it up. And now, I can pull all of this random stuff. However, if we take 1 divided by 7, each of these has a 15, just under 15% chance of coming up. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's unrealistic. I don't think there is, you know, less students than staff or an equal number, um, professors, etc. So what we would want to do is we would want to influence this some way. Okay. So one way to do that is to create new rows. Okay. So we could create... Nine new rows and drag student down more. Now, what will happen here is we will have to replace our count. So that's why it's very important for you to plan ahead and figure out what you're going to want. Now, that said, so we have 10 out of 16. So 62% of the respondents in our data set should be students then. However, we still leave this as equal number. Okay, so 1 out of 16. So 6.2% 6 of the time, um, any one of these is going to pop up. I don't know about you, but I think there's less industry guests than there are um, you know, staff, professor, and instructor. So once again, we want to think about curtailing this a little bit. So, you know, I'm going to put in, you know, this is where you have to get creative. Like, do you think it's a, you know, you know 30% staff to students, or is it, you know, 10% staff to student ratio here, meaning we have 10 students here and one staff, so that would be, you know, 11, I guess, out of the 11. It's still going to be pretty close, 9%, you know. So we're saying there's a 9% ratio for every one student okay, is 10% staff. So is that acceptable or not? Now, I would bump professor, actually three times, and instructor, <clears throat> well, we don't really have a lot of instructors in my, in my school, so I might leave it as that, because um, I, I, I feel like it's the same number right around here, like instructor, you know, industry guest, and prospective student, alumni, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's seasonality when alumni come for homecoming and things, but on a, any given day of the week, which is what we're trying to represent here, um, I really think these are kind of similar occurrences. So now we have our data set. 
And you certainly could add more students if you want. What it would do is it would devalue these. It would decrease the chance of these coming up. So I don't know about you, but I don't eat my lunch at the cafeteria. So let's let's do that. Let's bump a few more students um, and get us to 20. So now we're at 20. <clears throat> and one other thing that I like to do, so now we can get rid of all of this. And why is it coming back as student, all of them? Because we still have that ran between it sitting at seven, and now the first you know 12 rows of data are actually current student. So we're going to bump that. And actually got to bump it up here, not where that was. So now, look at our data set. It's, it's pumping. You know, it's pumping out some things that we were hoping to see there. <clears throat> now, here's another technique. Once you master this concept, you can actually go one or the min. This is going to become a crazy formula for you, but a very effective way to do things very fast is the min of this column and then the max of that column. And in effect, we'll close that bracket. So in effect, we'll close that bracket off, close that one off. We'll need another one here. That's where things get kind of tricky for you if you're not confident. But now, all I have to do is change the column when I want to do gender or something else. I don't need to change everything, like the 1 and the 20, because maybe in gender, I'm only going to have 10. And in lactose intolerant, I'm going to have 5. You know. So that's just one way to quickly make some data and give it a random distribution that you specify. Okay? Now, Watch what happens when I double click here or go anywhere else. So be very careful <clears throat> that you don't keep the formulas in here because they will keep changing. Because eventually we're going to want to look at correlation, such as should there be a professor that's 18 years old? Absolutely not. So we don't want to keep accidentally creating a randomization that we're going to regret, right? So what I like to do is take this massive formula, copy it. Like just go up to that bar and copy it, and go up in here, right click and go um, insert comment, and just pop that in there. Now I like to do that, but I could also do it over here as well if I wanted to. Eventually you're going to build a data dictionary where you might want to put that as well. So for example, I'm going to grab all of these columns. Now this is dangerous to do, because if you create new columns or move them around, your data dictionary has to reflect that. So what I recommend doing is um, getting an idea of what you want to do, and then you're just going to have to be careful with that data dictionary because if you create a new column in here after you've dealt your, done your data dictionary in here and it doesn't match up, that's not a good sign. Okay? So for now, just keep that up there uh, and, and move forward. Now, if we look at gender here, and <clears throat> you know we want to be careful now that we set up a new one. Now, we might find, you know, female, male, and then, you know, NA, not applicable or unknown, something along those lines. This will give a 33% chance of any one of these showing up. Now, I don't know about your campus or what you envision for a campus and your data set design. That's not generally true. You know, it's usually 5% here and you know, almost a 50-50 split here. So... If you want to reflect that, you're definitely going to have to have a lot more of these. Definitely going to have to have a lot more of these. <clears throat> um, so, for example, if I put NA at the bottom and I just create a couple more of these, now I'm at a 40%, you know, 5 times 2. You know, 1 divided by 5 is 20% times 2. Um, now I'm at 40%. So maybe I do it one more time. And we'll put the NA down there. And now we have about a seven, so we have three out of seven. It's three out of seven. So forty-two percent chance. You know, so if I do that times two, I've got eighty-five, which means naturally this would be if I do one divided by seven, about the difference. 
<clears throat> so would you say that 15% or 14% of your campus is that way? If not, then let's go one step further. Eight, nine. <clears throat> and you might be wondering, why do I keep putting the NA at the end? Because I just want to keep track of where it is in my set. In fact, I want to make this all female and this all male in a minute. Um, just for cleanliness. So now I've got nine rows. So I've got four occurrences, four over nine. There's 44%. You know, and we'll do this times two again. And I'm at 88, giving 11%. It's a little bit better, but if you want to keep doing this, you'll get a little bit better, a little bit better each time. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to carry this over. And, <clears throat> and obviously, you know, if you want to introduce a different gender um, into your model, you're certainly allowed to um, as well. So, but there we go. We've got some information there. Okay, now to bring that over, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy this. Don't drag across. You're not going to get the same result. You literally have to go up here to copy it. Now I'm going to go over here, plant it in there, and I'm going to make sure that my stuff starts in C uh, instead of A. I'm just going to manipulate that right there. C. And over here, I'm going to do C and D, but it's still 2 and 0, and there we go. So now we have our information there. So we've just created a staff member that is NA. We created a male professor, a male staff, current student female, instructor female, etc. Now, if you feel like you should have more females than males, then go ahead. Go ahead. If you also feel that you want more male teachers or more female teachers, you're going to have to do something a little more complicated than that. And then we will talk about that in a future video.